I'm David Kaiser, and this is Pipe Organs of South Carolina, and we are in Clemson at Fort Hill Presbyterian Church. Steve Grant, the former organist, is going to speak about the history of the organ and the church, and then the current organist is going to demonstrate some of the sounds this organ makes and will graciously play us some music. Hello, my name is Steve Grant, and uh, my relationship with Fort Hill Presbyterian Church is that during the decade of the 1980s, I was the organist. At that time, we were meeting in a much smaller worship space, and we had low ceilings and a lot of carpet, and of course that uh, pretty much dampened all the acoustics in the room. We also had a 1934 SD pipe organ uh, that was 13 ranks, and one day I opened the chamber door to the organ and I saw a roll of duct tape laying on the floor and I think the organ <laughs> may have been held together by some duct tape but I'm not sure about but that organ played beautifully until the day it was removed and we donated that organ to a mission church in Brazil so the organ had a uh, another life ahead of it um, Several years after I started playing here, we had a donor who anonymously gave a significant gift to start an organ fund. And there was so much excitement about it that we um, had all the money we needed within about two months to sign a contract for a new pipe organ. Um, about six months after that, there was more excitement and the leadership of the church decided to um, pursue the possibility of building a new sanctuary. What we're in right now is the new worship space. And um, one of the things that we did that Fort Hill was so wise to do was that we hired an acoustic designer, acoustic engineer. And early on, before one brick was laid or one nail was driven, we decided to form a committee of four people. And that was the organ builder. And it was also the um, chief architect and the construction engineer and the acoustic planner. And we all came into the meeting with our wish lists and we all had our budgets. And when we left a few hours later, we all had our wishes granted and we stayed in budget. So it was really just a magic time in the church. And um, organ builder that we chose to build the organ was Randall Dyer and Associates in Jefferson City, Tennessee. Randall is a member of APOBA, which is the American Pipe Organ Builders Association. Uh, Randall is a small company, and he um, is dedicated to designing exacting specifications for the exact room that you're in. There's no stock pipes, no inventory pipes, and there's no pre-made or preconceived stop lists. Um, this organ that we we're going to hear today is Randall's um, number 42. It was built in 1990, and um, it's 24 ranks, which is not really an extremely large pipe organ. But the thing that makes this organ sound so good in this room are two things, in my opinion. Uh, number one, we had an acoustic engineer. So behind these walls and the ceilings in the church, there's a lot of science and technology that you just don't see, but it's there, and the reverberation in this room is just absolutely excellent. Uh, the other thing is Randall Dyer's voicing uh, technician and tonal director is Brad Jones, and he was assisted by Jeff Weiler when he voiced this organ. And uh, they spent about two weeks in, in this room voicing the organ to this acoustic space. And Brad and Jeff were just, uh, are just immaculate professionals and they did a superior job on this organ. And they broke a lot of the rules in 1980 on voicing organs. And uh, in my opinion, what they did to this organ is they gave it a British accent. And what I mean by that is it has um, a sort of a casual laid back sound, but it's still very aggressive and um, it's uh, what we call a British accent in the organ world. Um, there's four stops on the organ that I would like to show you today, and then Judy Bonham is the resident organist at this church, and she's gonna play four pieces for you. 
Uh, the first stop that I'd like to show you is the 16-foot principle, which is in the facade of the organ. And if you can see it, it's right there. It's the longest pipe. These pipes are um, aluminum, and they were chosen to be aluminum because of the cost and also because of the weight of the material. And the 16-foot principle is a big woofy sound, and it sounds like this. But it is indeed the foundation of the organ pedal division. Um, the other stop that I wanted to show you very quickly was the, one of the percussion stops on the organ, and um, it's the chimes. And interestingly enough, the chimes on this organ were taken from the SD organ, so we would have a little bit of legacy dating back to 1936. <laughs> um, the other percussion stop on the organ is the Glockenstern. The Zimbelstern has two inch bells and the Glockenstern has four inch bells. So the Glockenstern is a little bit lower in pitch. And it, once again, it sort of contributes to that British sound that I was talking about earlier. And this is what it sounds like. It's four or five bells that circulate and they have a clapper that makes them play. And this one is very delicate and set back. It's not aggressive and, and um, sharp. And of course, the other final stop on the organ that is probably the visual centerpiece of the organ is the trumpet on Shamad, which if you look up here, of course, you can see it in the very center. Uh, the metal that's used to build these pipes is copper. And in this particular case, the pipes have, the copper pipes have been rolled in a flame and the purpose of doing that is to bring out the colors of the, of the copper when it's treated with heat, and this is called burnished copper. And as you can imagine, um, this trumpet, since it's horizontally placed and it's facing right out to the sanctuary, and of course the other factor on this organ is that these trumpet pipes have extra high wind pressure. So this is the regular trumpet. And this is the high pressure trumpet. sort of makes a statement, doesn't it? Um, so thank you very much for letting me explain this organ. Um, the, to my knowledge, Fort Hill Presbyterian Church has always had a pipe organ in it. And it began in 1934 with the Esty organ. And that organ serviced this church for over 50 years. And it is continuing to service the church. And uh, Fort Hill is very proud of this organ because it sounds so good in this space. And thank you very much. Judy's gonna play for us now. Hello, my name is Judy Bonham. I am the current organist here at Fort Hill. I've been here about 10 years and I consider it an honor and a privilege to have this wonderful instrument to play every week. The first piece I'm gonna play is Low How a Rose Air Blooming by Diane Bish. This will show you the lovely string sounds of the organ and the romantic sounds.
This is a Toccata on Vaini Emmanuel by John Barr. <laughs> quick uh, run through on some of the stops on the lower keyboard, which we call the choir division. This is the eighth flute. It's absolutely beautiful. This is a gedect, which means that it's capped pipe, and it has just a little chiff in it, which is that spitting sound. This is the flute celeste, which I wanted on the organ because it's just so uh, romantic and rich and lovely. And uh, I'm going to put on the tremulant with the 32 foot pedal. on the organ, this is the crumb horn. And then one of the things that I wanted to have on the organ also were several partials, which um, add sort of a, a unique color to the organ. Uh, the pipes are not divided into multiples of two, they're divided into fifths and thirds. And this is called the cornet, and this is what it sounds like. Then we had an extra partial added, which is the larigo, which is one and one third. And then, of course,
course, the loud trumpet instrument plays on the choir division. And what this allows you to do is to play full organ. And um, you can also have a trumpet solo against full organ. So you can do this kind of thing. <laughs> so that you could have completely full organ with the trumpet solo on top of it. And now David's going to show you some of the rest of the organ. All right, here are some of the stops on the grate, starting with the principal. Add the four foot to it. have a, a two-foot uh, flute that you could possibly add to the top. And with the mixture, and there's a 16. Here's how it sounds by itself. And if I add it into the full ensemble, the trumpet entremet that you've already heard is also uh, accessible here. And there is a single eight foot flute to the gedeck, and I will contrast it with the eight foot flute on the swell. Here it is by itself. And here's one of the flutes. Here's the flute on um, on the swell. Sorry, the prosody. Prosody. Not the swell. The choir. <laughs> sound that way. We can add in the, the cymbal stern with that. Have a little Christmas piece. And those are the sounds of the, of the great manual. You want to do this one? <clears throat> this is the roar flute on the swell division. Roar flute in German means chimney. And these pipes have a little uh, tube in the top of them that serves as a chimney to allow extra harmonics to come out. Uh, this is the viola. And this is the last stop. It's detuned on purpose and it has a rich, uh, warm, romantic sound.
the swell, you use the viola, the rock flute, the four-foot flute, the two-foot flute, and the trumpet with the four-foot coupler, which allows you to play automatically in octaves. So you get a pretty good sound on the swell with full organ. <laughs> Well, can go from uh, very loud, just like we did here, cancel everything and go back to just the strings. And if you close the expression pedal on the organ, it allows these louvers to close and gives you a really uh, quiet sound. Okay, thank you very much. These four windows right here were in the original church too. And they were all taken out and completely restored. When was the original church built? Uh, it was 1878, I think. Hmm. Let's take a quick trip upstairs.